What's up everybody, Chef Glenn Beanham back in the kitchen and today I'm working on mushroom risotto. I'm gonna to attempt to pair it with an Italian wine. I've got a 2018 Giusti Amarone della Valpolicella. So this wine consists of a Valpolicella blend and that blend consists of Corvina Veronese and Corvinone. It's actually 80% of that. And there's 20% of Rondinella. This is a big wine, it's 16% alcohol see what we got going on here. So I usually don't get into the wines this early in the video, but because I'm doing the mushroom risotto, this recipe is gonna go pretty quickly. Once we start with the risotto, you can't stop, and you won't stop until it's done. So I wanted to go ahead and get into the wine first. So again, as I mentioned, this is a, uh, it's 16% it's alcohol, big wine. All right, so the color is really dark. It's really dark, it's opaque. Uh, it's, it's ruby, it's, uh, I mean, it's a brilliant ruby. It's garnet in color. Let's see what else is going on here. Mm. Wait, it's 2018, right? Yeah, this is, uh, if I was blind tasting and I, you know, did my little smelling, smelling thing, I would swear that this was at least 10 years older than this, or maybe a few, a few more than that. Um, this is really, on the nose, it smells like it's, uh, it's got some age. That's interesting. This is, a, again, this is 16% alcohol. Let's give it a taste. Full body, mm. really dark and brooding. You can, uh, the 16% alcohol, it's really, really, really beautiful. I mean, uh, oh wow. And the finish, so I took that sip a second ago and I'm, the finish, is, it's still going down. I can still taste it. It's warming as it goes down. Long, long finish on this. This is, this is interesting. I'm intrigued. I mean, again, the 16% alcohol, it's a big wine. Um, and the fact that it tastes like it's, like it's a 2008, as opposed to a 2018. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all for rich wines that are aged and if you can give it to me that way in a wine that's not quite that age, I'll take it. So let's see. All right, so now that we've tasted the wine, let's talk a little bit about the risotto. So as I mentioned, I'm making a mushroom risotto. Uh, let's start with the mushrooms. So I'm using a combination of Baby Bella's and shiitake mushrooms. I've got here my arborio rice. This is the rice that I'm using. I've got some chicken stock. We've got shallots. This is this is just the uh, the arborio. That's what it looks like. It's a short grain rice. Got a little thyme. Got some parmigiano uh, parmigiano reggiano, and a little more of that that I'm going to use to finish my risotto with. Got some chives, butter, uh, and I'm cooking with some wine as well. So in doing this risotto, I wanna get my stock hot and I wanna keep the stock hot throughout the entire cooking process. We wanna use hot stock, all right? Um, that's one of the key elements. One of the key points that, that I wanna point out is that your stock needs to remain hot. You wanna get it up to a nice little simmer, little bubble, not a boil, just a simmer to ensure that it's hot and, uh, and keep it hot throughout the entire cooking process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my stock in my pot So the recipe calls for, uh, for four cups of stock. 
But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have extra stock in the pot. As I mentioned before, you wanna keep the stock hot. So naturally, if you're gonna keep heat under it, it's gonna evaporate a little bit. So you wanna have a little extra for the, the loss that you may incur, but in addition to that, you wanna have a little extra because when you get to the end of the cooking process of your risotto, if you find that you need a little bit more stock, it's better to have stock here ready to go than to not have any at all and, and looking around to try to find some stock, okay? So while I'm bringing my stock up to temperature, I need to get my mushroom sauteed. So I've got my, my uh, large saute pan here. Uh, I'm just gonna add a little olive oil to the pan. I'm gonna add my mushrooms to the pan. I wanna saute these mushrooms until all of the liquid has cooked out of them and then they're brown. It's gonna take anywhere from eight to 10 minutes to get that done. I'm gonna add a little salt to my mushrooms. All right, so I got my stock hot. Uh, it said I've got a little simmer going on. I'm using the pan that I sauteed the mushrooms in and I'm ready to get started on my risotto. I'm gonna start with some olive oil. I'm gonna saute my shallots. All right, so the shallots are beginning to take on a little bit of translucence. I'm gonna add the arboreal rice to that. I'm gonna go ahead and add my thyme to the uh, arboreal. So I'm just gonna saute this just a little bit for a minute or two or so. Uh, I wanna toast the arborio, and you'll notice that the arborio begin, begins to become a little opaque if you look at it really closely. For just a minute or two. Now I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of white wine. Allow that white wine to evaporate completely. So I've got a ladle here, it's about a half cup ladle. And what I wanna do is I wanna ladle about a half a cup or so of this stock at a time into, this, into the uh, arborio. What we're gonna do is allow all of the liquid, just about all of the liquid to cook off before I add another ladle of liquid. And we'll do that until the arborio is done. I'm gonna go ahead and add another scoop of liquid. You add your liquid in, you give it a stir. You don't wanna over stir, you don't wanna constantly stir it. When you, when you add your liquid, you give it a good stir and then you leave it alone for a few seconds. All right, so the risotto's coming along nicely. As I mentioned, you wanna slowly cook this. One scoop at a time until the liquid just about evaporates and then you add more. So it's looking good. You wanna, what you wanna do is you, you don't wanna do too much stirring. I mean, not constant stirring, but consistent stirring. You wanna make sure that it's not sticking. You wanna keep it moving a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add another ladle of stock.
Okay, so we're almost there with the risotto. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few things to it. Add another ladle of stock. I'm gonna season it with some black pepper. Season it with some salt as well. And I'm gonna put in some of my mushrooms, but I wanna reserve some. I'm gonna put in three quarters of them. Stir those in. I've got some butter that I'm gonna add. I'm just gonna fold that butter in there. And I got some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. I'm gonna fold all of that in there. Got my dish. I'm just gonna start adding it to the bowl. I'm gonna add some of my sauteed mushrooms. Top it off. I've got some more Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And I'm gonna add some chives. All right, so the risotto's ready. I've already tasted the wine. I'm gonna dig right into this bowl. Wow. That's really good, Chef Glenn. Pretty good. Man. Wow. Really, really good risotto. Let's see if it pairs with this wine. Hmm. Gotta try it again. I'm not sure. Best pairing. It's uh yeah, not the best pairing. I mean it's it's okay. I mean in a pinch, if that's all you had to drink with it, although this is a fantastic wine, and I'm gonna have this later with my steak. Um, but it's not working with this. Give me a second. Alright, so the first wine didn't work. Fantastic wine. As I mentioned, I'm gonna have this later with my steak. So let me go ahead and cover my glass up. You see my little wine glass cover here? Cover my wine glass up. And I've got the 2023 Rocchioli Russian River Valley Sauvignon Blanc. And let me tell you a quick story about these wines. I was on a wait list for nearly five years to get the opportunity to buy Rocchioli wines. This is my first time tasting any of their wines. Uh, I received some some weeks ago and have yet to try any try any of them. I don't normally open a wine uh, so soon when it, it's only been here a few weeks. But in a pinch, I need to find something to pair with this risotto. So my first time trying Rocchioli. It's a soft blanc in color, in appearance. Wow, wow. 
all kinds of tropical fruit going on on the nose. <sighs> wow. Yeah, I'm getting mango, guava, those type of tropical fruit. Let's give it a taste. You're getting a visceral reaction from me right now on these wines, on this wine. First of all, mouthfeel is more than, it's, it's, nearly, it's nearly medium body. There's a little mouthfeel to this soft blanc. I, I haven't had an opportunity to, to read up on these wines and see what kind of treatment, whether there's oak or stainless steel. And because I had to pull this bottle in a pinch, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm learning about them as we go. And my risotto is getting cold. Let me check this pairing. Mm. After it's not getting cold, <laughs> it's still warm. It's delicious. Just so you know, this is fantastic, okay? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that works. Now, when I make these recommendations for wines, just as I you know, made this recommendation, you can, Look, you can source these wines. Some of them, some of the wines that I, that I share with you may, uh, may be a little bit difficult, you know, to get. Some of them are not, you know, really available gen generally. Uh, but when I make these recommendations, I'm making recommendations based on the varietal, not necessarily the, not necessarily the specific producer or the uh, winemaker. Um, so if I make a recommendation on a Sauvignon Blanc, again, I, I told you it took me five years to get the opportunity to start buying these, uh, to get off of the wait list to start, you know, to get the opportunity to buy these wines. But you can find some fantastic Sauvignon Blancs. It doesn't have to be a Rocchioli Sauvignon Blanc. These are general suggestions for a type of varietal, okay? Now, I also want you to not be daunted and not be, uh, not, to, not to think that you can't source these wines because you can get on a list and wait for the wines just like I did. Uh, you know, so any of the wines that you see that I share with you, they're not totally impossible to get. You can get the wines, they take a little effort, but you can get them, okay? And it's worth that effort, I'm telling you. This type of reaction that I'm having right here, this is a Sauvignon Blanc, and it's a very inexpensive Sauvignon Blanc, and it's fantastic. I'm telling you, this is, uh, this is one of the better Sauvignon Blancs I've tasted, and I've tasted some Sauvignon Blancs that are twice, three times, four times the price of this. And this is good, right up there with those. So I'm truly impressed with this, this, uh, this wine. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to watch my video today. For those of you that are new, please go ahead and take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I regularly drop videos where I'm sharing my favorite recipes and I'm pairing them with wines. It would also help me, guys, if you would hit that like button. Uh, it lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. I'm Chef Glenn B, and as always, eat well.